So our conversation of money and abundance, uh, to kick off, it's the new level of abundance is going to require a new level of thinking now. And that thinking starts with receiving. When you receive, everyone receives. Everyone. And the person in front of you just then that was offering radiance, offering their energy, that was the universe. Always trying to offer abundance, ideas, opportunities, energy, connections. And you're the one saying yes or no. By getting in your head thinking, I'm not worthy yet. I don't have my shit together yet. I'm not good enough yet. So it's cool to just witness the story that comes up of when you're trying to receive someone and you can still feel there's resistance for you. And then when you let that down and you let it hit your heart and you're like, whoa, that's available to you at all times. So I want you to take your journal out if you haven't already and write down the names of 10 people in your energy field, in your life, in your world right now, who receive every time you receive. It doesn't stop at you. The farmer at the farmer's markets receives every weekend from me. If I let myself receive money, abundance, support, I get to then support him. When I receive, my kids receive. When I receive, my hairdresser receives. When I receive, I can pay for a service to take care of my parents or my family or a friend. There are people in the world who want to receive from you and you're getting in the way. If I didn't let myself fully receive and be supported in my light work the way that I know I can be and am, none of you would be here. And if I had done that, it would have made it about me. If you're not allowing yourself to receive in the way that you know you can and you want to, you're still making it about you. Do you guys get that? You're making it about you, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I'm not dot, 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 dot. It's our responsibility to clear up our shit around receiving. If we're gonna serve in the way that we know we want to. So anytime you're in an experience of receiving money or having that opportunity <clears throat> or generating abundance from your light work, don't get in your ego of, shit, I'm greedy. No, I can't take that. Receive the money and pour it back into your dreams and into your light work and serve more people. Doesn't matter how big or how small, that's not the point, it's the energy, remember? So just that list of 10 people, that's people who directly receive when you let yourself receive. So let's just practice opening that up a little bit wider now. And it's fun. It's fun to receive. It's fun to give as well, but they've got to work together. We can't do our best work when we're depleted. 
and undernourished. So the second point here <clears throat> is that abundance loves clarity. This is really important. Abundance loves clarity. When we tune into the energy of abundance, money, whatever you want to label it, it's not scattered, it's not anxious, it's not rushy, it's very grounded. And it doesn't like to be confused. So when you're receiving, train your brain to kind of know where you're gonna direct that. You don't have to know down to the cent. This will make sense in a sec. But if you don't even know what your channels of receiving are right now, or you're kind of like closing the doors on some, like abundance doesn't know how the fuck to get to you. If you've got 45 bank accounts open, if you've got 75 receipts in your wallet all shoved in, like the money can't fucking fit in there. So we've got to clean up our energetic trip hazards. I like to think about this, if I, just, just for example, if I was working at home and I, I, my light work was, you know, people coming to my home and having healing sessions or something like that, if that was an example, okay? And they're coming in the front door and they're tripping over shit and they're like, what room is it in? And I've like got the door closed and I got all crap all over the office desk. Can you see how there's so many trip hazards for abundance to actually get to me? All these little things along the way that we're just dusting under the rug, oh, I'll do it later. I'll sort that out later. A lot of people have a story of, uh, I just don't understand money. I don't understand it. So, you know, I don't understand that tax stuff. Guys, educate yourself on it. Again, you don't need to know everything. Just know the next thing. It's just so important especially as we've seen what's been going on on this side of the country, we need money in the hands of light workers right now. So think about three things I want you to, to write down. What are three energetic trip hazards that if you have a physical space, think about that. How is, how is money just being confused on how it can go from like A to B? Do I need to maybe treat myself to a new wallet because it's like the zips are broken and the money actually falls out all the time there's sh shit coming out everywhere do I have like 70 cards that maybe I need to just you know consolidate have a really clear container people when they try to work with me do I send them 18 different emails and then they're so confused that they don't even book in because they're like well now I just I'm so overwhelmed that I don't know what to do <laughs> Like, let's make it so easy for abundance to find us by clearing up any of this confusion, any of this resistance. Makes sense, doesn't it? Is anyone like, oh, I've got some little trip hazards I need to clean up? You might not think of it now. You might think of it on the way home in two weeks. That's just something we can't keep dusting under the rug. Do what you can to start having a really joyful relationship with money, however that looks for you, one day at a time. The third point here, or the second, I don't know, whatever number, this is your new mantra. I commit to a high vibrational relationship with money. I commit to a high vibrational relationship with money. In brackets underneath, especially when it's really fucking inconvenient. <laughs> It's really easy to be hashtagging abundance on payday and feeling really grateful on payday. But the work in this comes in the abundant little moments. 
checking in with your thoughts, checking in with your body, checking in with your feelings. Am I talking shit about money? I remember a, a really clear moment where something shifted for me around money. And up until that point, I was still kind of in that mindset of like, oh, I'll, I'll deal with this later. I'll, kind of, I'll think about this later, I'll clean that up later. And I remember thinking this mantra, no, you know what, I'm drawing a line in the sand, I commit to a high vibrational relationship with money moving forward. Next day, get a fine for being on my phone. Fuck. First fine I've ever ex got in my whole life. I was living on the edge that day and don't try this at home. Never drive with your phone there. But the night before I'd said, I commit. I'm committed, you know what, line in the sand, like I'm fucking showing up for my money shit because I have work to do and I cannot do it at the capacity I want to if I am not receiving. So get my casual $450 fine on the spot, whatever it is now. Oh yeah, nasty one. Not even like a little $4 one. And in that moment, Everything changed because I said, you know what? If I'm committed to this, this is an opportunity for me to embody what I say that I want. Am I going to charge this up and make it a bigger deal than it actually is? Or am I just gonna be like, you know what? Let's deal with it, done. You know how when you get a fine and you actually chuck a little dummy spit? <laughs> no matter how much money in your bank account, you can go into that naturally thing of like, oh, fucking universe, like parking ticket, whatever it is, right? What if all we had to do was not charge it up to something bigger than it needs to be? Because every time we do that, we're thinking that money abundance is still outside and still out there and still a big deal. What if we can just dissolve some of that charge and stop making it a story? You guys get what I'm saying by that, hey? Where am I still going into my little girl energy? And we all do it given the, the bird to the universe, every time that shows up, rather than how do I want to handle this? If I'm committed to a high vibrational relationship with money, what's that going to look like now? How am I going to think about money? And we're not going to be perfect at it all the time. But it's got nothing to do with the amount, amount and everything to do with how you're feeling about the amount. That's it. You've got to dissolve resistance around it. Money has nothing to do with the amount and everything to do with what you're telling yourself about the amount. That's it. Moment to moment we practice this. So writing three things down. If I was committed to a high vibrational relationship with money, moving forward from today, what's that gonna look like? I'm gonna stop telling all my friends how broke I am because guess what, that's the thing keeping you broke. I'm going to stop complaining about not having money and come back to my power and make an empowered decision to move forward. Awesome. How am I going to create it? Okay, point number four here. <clears throat> kind of ties back in with a lot of what I've been talking about today. Your intuition is a speed dial to abundance. Your intuition is a speed dial to abundance. So our intuition starts to open the door to abundance and action on that intuition 
is what opens the door wider. Back to what I was saying at the start of the day, we, like inspiration, ideas, creative solutions isn't the problem for anyone in this room. The backing it up and doing the action and not overthinking it is the problem. You have guidance available to you at all times. Like your vision is trying to support you at all times. If you just tune in and listen and have the courage to actually start moving on that action. We can't keep pretending we don't hear what our next step is or that we don't know what's right for us. Your intuition and, and your vision and your success and your creation and your dreams, they are like this. They freaking know what's up. And your intuition is feeding you little glimpses of that all the time. And we're going, well, that's not really, that doesn't really make any sense. How the fuck am I gonna pay for that? How am I gonna pay for my yoga training? And my intuition is telling me, you need to get your ass to that yoga training. Or, no, but I should keep doing this, or this is what I've always done, or this is how the coaches do it, or this is what, this is the order, this is that step-by-step -step outdated map that I was speaking about. The universe has the freaking hookups, you guys. Stop being scared to ask. And the second piece of that is please stop judging where your support is coming from. Do not ever close the door on the universe pouring in support from maybe a, a source that you've been judging yourself for. I should be full time in my light work, but I'm like part time here and part time here. Perfect. So many people judge themselves when they're, when they're moving towards their dreams of going back to their job. Anyone, does anyone get that? Then you go back to your job and you're like, fuck, I've failed. No, you haven't. That work, that support, that whatever's coming in is part of your vision. It's literally the universe being like, let's bring the resources in so you can keep moving forward. And often what we see logically as one step uh, you know, backwards is actually three steps forward. We're just thinking, this isn't how I thought it was gonna look. So we've got to kind of surrender that over a little bit because maybe there's a fucking better way coming or trying to come through. Fourth point here, and we're gonna do a little activity. This is really important. Prep your nervous system by incremental upgrades. Prep your nervous system by incremental upgrades. Same that we do with our dreams, we feel like we need to go from zero to Instagram famous millionaire in one day. <laughs> no, we just don't. Give yourself full permission to just stay in your own money lane right now. Staying in my own little zone. It's important that we take uh, incremental upgrades or tiny little adjustments along the way so that when we're welcoming more abundance in, we don't freak out and let it all go back out again. <laughs> yeah. Yep, thanks. <laughs> so kind of how we do this, I'm just gonna wait for that actually. So how we do this is starting to ask yourself the question anytime you're in relation to money or receiving, spending, whatever it might look like. Is this, this habit, this belief, this story, is this solidifying my current money identity and re reality or stretching me into a new one? Is this story, is this habit, is this belief solidifying my current reality with money or stretching me into a new one. So what I mean by that is kind of like a draft copy version of 
your abundance. Stretching yourself so your nervous system doesn't have to react so much when you need to invest in your growth, in your light work, in whatever it is, your relationships, your health, anything. Let me give you an example. You might kind of, for you right now, what might feel really far away, or like, let's just paint the picture here of, um, you wanna stay at like a fancy hotel, let's just paint that picture. Um, but right now you're like, getting the cheapest, cheapest thing that you can find on Airbnb. Perfect, that is perfect. You're gonna keep feeling so far away from that until you start to stretch that boundary a little bit of, okay, let's maybe do four nights here, one night there. I always bring this back, I'm looking to Lauren because you always remind me of it because we had such a jam about this. Stop taking the fucking red eye flights. <laughs> If it's saving you like $35, guys, you don't need it. Take care of your nervous system. So many of the time it's like, is it that you can't afford it or you don't feel worthy of receiving it? We're just on autopilot, I can't afford it, I can't afford it, I can't afford it, can't do it, can't do it. And it's like just little things at a time. That's how we start to expand our aura of abundance. Not zero to millionaire in one day. It doesn't have to be like that. Can you see how there's little moments that you could actually choose a really easy second option, but your autopilot is just to keep going here because it's just your comfort zone. Maybe even shopping at the same place. It's like, it doesn't even fucking matter what it's talking about. It's more like, okay, if I'm working on my abundance story, saying the same shit over and over again, going to the same place over and over again, spending the same amount of money on a, on a red eye, as an example, feeling like shit over and over again, is this, if I keep doing the same thing, is that just going to keep solidifying that or can I stretch myself a little bit to change it? Is this landing? You guys understanding what I mean by this? Yeah. Because that's how we train ourselves to hold it. That's important. We don't bring it all in and then shit our pants and it all goes away and then we're like, well, what's the point of that? Money, no point to doing it. So the last point that I want to say here, which I think kind of ties a big bow on all of that. Actually, firstly, write down three things that you're going to start upgrading. Maybe, actually, maybe even like upgrading for right now is that you start talking to an accountant. Because maybe like, I'm going to do all this myself and you're confused and you're stressed and you create charge around it. And that's not clarity for abundance or money. We have to take the stress out of money because it's creating unnecessary resistance. What am I going to just draw a line in the sand? What am I not going to do anymore? It's like remembering that. If you had $10, you can buy 10 things for $1 or one thing for $10. See how it's the same, same, but energetically very different? So just thinking about that. Um, also, last thing I want to say before I move on to the last point is if you're wishing you should be further ahead by now, with the abundance thing, I should have more savings, I should have more money, I should be on this income level, whatever it might be. Just check in with how you're handling what you've got right in front of you right now. I've briefly spoken about this, but I want the fucking 20 grand, I want the two grand or whatever it is, but right here there's $200 and I'm actually not really respecting it. I'm not educating myself on what to do with that. So that whole thing I talked about of, are you actually ready for it? If you had the six figures tomorrow, if you had what you think you need and want right now, do you know how to manage that? And it's not like, a, oh, you're shit, you don't know. It's great. Now I can put my training wheels on and I can prep myself so that when more starts coming in, I got this and I can trust myself with it. 
very important point. So last thing here about abundance is that forgiveness opens the floodgates. I know many of you would have heard this a million times, but I'm going to put a little spin on it. Every person in this room, I know for a fact, without even having to go into a big thing about it, was very powerful at some point. This life or a past life, it doesn't matter. Everyone in this room was very powerful at one point and we didn't understand it. We didn't know what it meant. And some of us maybe abused it. And we've carried a lot of that into this lifetime and that's why we're bumping up with so resistance because we don't trust ourselves with it again. With power, with abundance. So we're gonna do a little exercise right now to start to cut a few cords on that. Anything we might've carried in consciously, unconsciously. You'll be surprised at what might come through. So maybe get a new page here. And we're going to write down, I forgive myself for. And we're going to write for five minutes everything that you can think of, of where you have a little bit of charge around money. I want to give you some quite powerful examples that might help you get the ball rolling. I forgive myself for lying about my debt and pretending that it's not there. I forgive myself for stealing money when I was younger. Did someone just say, oh shit? <laughs> <laughs> I thought someone said, oh shit, she got me. No, I was sniggering. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, sorry, whatever that was. I forgive myself for demanding more money without being grateful for what I have. I forgive myself for blaming money for my relationship problems. Big one. I forgive myself for undercharging my worth and letting people rip me off. I forgive myself for pretending I don't care about money because it's not spiritual, apparently. I forgive myself for spending my inheritance on things that weren't good for me. I forgive myself for not having any savings right now and being known as the broke friend and feeling embarrassed and shameful. I forgive myself for using money as an excuse for the reason I don't chase my dreams, for judging other people with money, or for making a bad decision that cost me a lot of money. So that's just some examples of the way maybe that something's been in your experience up until this point, that you've just got a little jolt of, I don't trust myself with money. It doesn't bring good things, it makes me feel scared, unsafe, anything. So we're gonna spend five minutes here. I want you to heart dump the shiz out of this. Anything, even if the sentence doesn't even make sense, even if it's something from when you're three years old, write everything you can down about any charge you have around money right now. And just starting to take a nice deep breath here. We're gonna take that energy and have a quick little shake out. And I mean, shake out, shake out. So journals away. <laughs> We're gonna put some tunes on. I'm just gonna start to move a little bit. So any of that funkiness that just came up, just start to shake it out here. You can move around if you need a bit more space. Move some resistance. <clears throat> Keep breathing. Okay, now crank it up. 
up about 80% now, okay? <laughs> down. 